All right, so today we're gonna to go over the both lighting and the WMX1 and how to program. We did another video on this, and a lot of people wanted more info on how to program their lights, so that's what we're gonna do. So this is a very small uplight from both lighting. The RF4, we have our wireless transmitter here. All right, and so now basically we should have a signal transmitting from the transmitter to the receiver, and we just have it on a longer cable coming from uh, port D on the WMX1. All right, so we did a little testing earlier and found out the exact channels of these guys. In order, it is, I believe, eight channels, eight channels, and the order is dimmer, red, green, blue, white, amber, UV, and then strobe. Okay, it was kind of hard to figure that out with the lack of manuals and things like that, so that is the order of this guy. It's eight channels, we confirmed. So now we're gonna go in here and program a custom fixture for this. And we'll actually, I'll go and see if there already is a fixture that exists. All right, so brand new WMX1 here. You're gonna go up right corner. It's gonna tell you all the fixtures you have in your list. So currently we have none. So we're gonna add a fixture up here, click add. Now, I already looked through and made sure that the fixture we wanted was not already here. If it did, it would exist under here under folders. And then you could go to a folder that has a bunch and then pick your actual, well, pick your actual light right here. And then you could pick the number of lights you have and that would uh, give it different DMX addresses depending on the amount and the channel size. Now we don't have any lights that exist, right? So if we did, we could probably pick from generic, but because we don't, we're gonna go up here. This top one allows you to edit an existing fixture, but we want to create our own. So we're gonna click this second button over here. And so now we have blank options. So our first option is going to be our dimmer. All right, and that's gonna go between zero and 255, which is good. So we're gonna hit back and we're gonna do our next one, which we want to be red. All right, and that's by default between zero and 255. And then we're gonna do green. We're gonna do over here, blue. All right, the fifth option is over here, channel five. This one is going to be white, yeah, white. And then we're gonna do amber. And then we wanna do UV, which is right here. And then our last option we want is going to be our shutter, which is also strobe. Now strobe, it's saying zero is open. Uh, we actually wanna change that. I, is that true? Yes, yeah, zero is open. And then basically we're gonna start our strobe min uh, and we want to do a value here at one. And then we want our strobe max to be all the way up. Whoops, I'll go back and change that. Strobe max at 255, strobe min at zero. So I'm turning this knob here and I'm clicking enter. Uh, sorry, it actually wants that to be one. So strobe min is one, strobe max is 255, and open is going to be zero. So that means uh, at zero, we're not strobing at all, but we're letting light through. Okay, so that is how we're setting up. We're gonna uh, name it. So what are these called again? Both lighting RF4. Okay, so we're gonna hit, uh, let's see, shift, there it is. Both uh, RF4. Yep. Okay, we're gonna go R, F, and then a number four. Hit done, done, save. So it's saving, and now we have both RF4. And because all of these lights are gonna be just on DMX1, we're just gonna click amount one, and we're gonna hit add. And we wanna add it to group A. That's gonna have it show up right here in this column. And we're done. So now what should happen is if we go over here and we hit a color like one of these i just want to make sure we're not on blackout or anything like that we are not mains at 100 percent. we have our dimmer up here ah make sure our transmitter is receiving power and there we go so we had to make sure our transmitter was in fact receiving power which is the red blinking light <coughs> that's a donner Transmitter. Donner transmitter, all right. They make a bunch of different types of transmitters. You just need to make sure the one you have is compatible with whatever your light is. Correct. 
So then if you can get the light and the WMX one the same shot, we are going to start changing the color. So I'm gonna go up over here to color, that's UV. Let's see, we have a bunch of different ones here. Um, and you can do a lot of cool things. You can toggle between colors by clicking this button. You can see it says one through five and then six through 10 when we change, click here. So with just one light, you can really only pick one color. I don't really think you can pick a mix of colors here. It'll probably just go with whatever's on top. Yeah, it's just gonna go with whatever's on top. So that works best when you have multiple fixtures with different DMX addresses. So for now, we're gonna stay on single and we can choose our color. Now here's what you want. This is amber, this is great. But a lot of times people want a very specific type of amber. They want something like a candlelight. So let's go ahead and program that. Instead of programming it on the amber, I'm gonna program it on lime because lime to me is a very ugly color. So I'm gonna hit <laughs> shift and then I'm gonna hit click. When we do that, it opens up wow. an RGB kind of color wheel, uh, but this is like, allows you to pick a specific color. Um, we can toggle between red, green, blue, white. And if you click up here, we get more. And I don't even know if you click over here, you get even more options. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a very specific color here. So we are going to create a good looking candle light. So I'm gonna increase my amber, my UV and my white is down. I'm gonna pull green down pull red back up. Uh, I want a hint of blue in there. And we'll go with that. So that's a little different from Ander, Amber. It's a little more of a candlelight. And then to save all this, I'm gonna hit this flashing button because this is what I'm programming. So I'm gonna hit save. And now I have two Ambers here. Now you can't rename that, at least not off the top of my head. It doesn't look like you can rename it. So you are stuck with whatever its naming convention is but now I have an amber up here, which if you look at the light, you're gonna see that that is straight amber. And then mine is a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um, it's a little less harsh of the, of the deep reds in there. I got some other colors um, kind of warming it up. So you have the kind of harsh amber and the light amber here. Um, and that's how you can create your colors. And you can do that for any color in this color wheel. So now let's talk about doing effects, right? Because these are up lights, you have no mover effects. The beam effects really control the dimmer, uh, which can go up and down and flash and stuff. The color effects are where most people wanna live. So right now, nothing's activated. If I click this button right here, it's going to activate my color effects. And we can see the light is changing colors. Let's go take a look at the color effect that's on and see what it's doing. So right now, it's doing kind of a rainbow fade between this orange, amber, and this purple and we can control the speed of that fade right here, okay? So now it's going to fade between them uh, a little more gentle. And it might be a little hard to see the color, but we are going between amber and uh, a purple right now. And so I can decrease the fade so it'll more just cut over a period of time. You can see that it'll just change, right? Give it some time and it'll just change. I can increase the speed to show you guys that it is just changing between colors and I increase fade so that it'll fade between the colors instead. And they have lots of really good options over here on the WMX one. Um, so this guy is going to kind of uh, bounce between, again, if we had more lights programmed to different channels, a lot of these would become more useful. But when I'm doing just one, t one up light, or at least a lot of up lights on one channel, I'll use the rainbow effect and then just change the speed, change the fade, and then I can select multiple colors here. And just by changing what colors I have, so this is a red and a purple, there's a blue, do the same thing you did last time, shift click, and I can change that wow. blue, right? So I can make it fade between two very specific colors just by picking any color I want, like this red and blue. I don't want that to be blue. I want that to be uh, specifically uh, yellow. I can increase my yellow. And by the way, I can just point on here too, because it is a touch screen. So I can have that be a yellow, and now that's a yellow. If I wanna go back to blue, I can go back and I can set it to 100% blue, make sure nothing else is up, we're good, and now that's back to blue. So, and you can just pick whatever colors you want. So during a show, you're probably gonna pick a couple colors here, you're probably not gonna change it too much unless you're, let's say, a lighting guy. If you're the DJ, you're probably focused on DJing more than lighting. You can always turn the color effect off, it's gonna to default to whatever your initial 
background color was here, okay? Um, we won't get too into building your own scenes. We can make that a separate video, but this is just a basic overview. But you can go into live edit or presets and kind of build out your own specific scenes, uh, specific colors that save every time, etc. So that's that. And then uh, last thing we're going to do is go over our overrides page here. So let's turn on a color effect. And then our overrides. So I call this the chaos button. I'm not sure what other people call it. But if you click it, it basically just takes whatever colors you have selected from your effects, adds white to it, and kind of randomly changes between them at slow and fast rates. So that's the chaos button. It works very well for drops and things like that, and it's always there ready to go. It does not change. You cannot change the function of it much. Then we have a strobe. Again, it just takes whatever your existing colors are right now and strobes them. And you can change the pace of the strobe here. So over here, we can change the pace. And all I'm doing is holding down, I'll use my other hand here, and change the speed. You can also change the speed with this knob as well. And you can see how that moves the mm. fader down. So these are, these are all just quick effects. Um, these V-pads are very useful. So I'm gonna leave that 100%. We can also change how these buttons function. By holding it down, I can change this. Instead of a flash, I can change it to a toggle. So that's staying on even though I'm not touching it. And so every time I click it, it's going to strobe as is. We can change it to a one second timer, which means every time I click it, it's gonna hold for a second and then go off. Oh, that's Hold cool. for a second and then go off. And we can change it to a five second, even a 10 second. My strobes, I like to stay on flash. So as I hold it down, it strobes. As I take my hand off, it doesn't. Because strobes can be a little annoying to, to certain people at the party. Uh, blinder, same way. So blinder just means full white, and this is gonna be every single light that you have will work off of this blinder. Um, and so there is a fade out. I don't personally like the fade out. Um, so I set my fade out to zero. And so basically every time I click, the it just get a full white. So I have a strobe, I have a blinder, and then I also have a uh, speed works for your effects. So right now we have this fading between different colors at a certain speed, specifically 50% or 56%. If I hit speed, we're gonna multiply that by two and I can go even faster. That's all it does. Again, this one's also set to flash, so it only works when I hold it down. I could set it to toggle and then I could click it on and click it off um, and we can change the speed. Times two is decent. I rarely use the speed, honestly, in my shows uh, if I'm doing lights with the WMX one. Times eight makes a drastic difference um, you could also change it to a freeze and that might work out even better. Uh, especially when the, the beat stops or something like that, you can just hit speed instead of hitting blackout and everything stops moving. So that is a very cool feature for how to use speed. Um, and you can leave it as toggle, makes a lot of sense there. And then finally a blackout. Blackout does work for all of your lights. Um, blackout does work for all your lights, except you can create live scenes that ignore the blackout. Uh, again, we can go over to that later, but I have used the blackout, needed everything to black out, except I forgot that I had programmed some, some of my scenes to ignore this blackout, and then it didn't work. And then I had to quickly go through and drop the dimmers down and things like that. So be aware of that. Uh, if you have a smoke machine, you can program it here to the smoke button, but a lot of people are doing weddings and events without smoke machines, so it's good to have, but you don't always need it. Okay, so that is kind of how you use this. Finally, you have the BPM tap. Uh, the way you would use that is you can go to your color effects and there's options. When you click down on this button here, you have speed and you finally have a mic. So now it's going to change based on the music in the room. And again, you can change the percentage of speed. So if I set this to zero, actually if I set it to 100%, it's just kind of going off the ambiance of sound in the room. Let's pull this down a little bit. And so you can change how you want that to work, how sensitive you want your mic. I think that's what that really is. It's more of a sensitivity than a, uh, than a speed. Uh, but we're actually gonna change this to BPM. And so now this BPM fader is going to work for us. And so we can basically tap our BPM here and you're gonna see the numbers change. And so if we take this off of a fade and just make it toggle, uh, we can tap to the beat. And then it'll keep our BPM for us. 
And so on the home page, you can see this BPM at all times. It's right up here. That's your BPM tab. And so that's how you're going to use this BPM button. A lot of DJs just want their lights to go along with the music. And this is a great way to do it with a BPM tap. Um, or you can use the mic setting. And this has a mic in it. Set the sensitivity for how you like it. So you can just keep it on auto. Yeah, you can basically just keep it on auto the whole time. Nice. Um, you yeah. might want to change your sensitivity. And on the back of this controller, there is a line in. So if you can get oh. a feed out of your board or out of your mixer or whatever, um, then oh, you wow. could take a line in right to here and it'll jump over to the line in if something's plugged in. Then you have a nice clean sound. So that way you and the client aren't talking right above this thing and it's picking up that in the mic and changing the lights to it. So that could be another great way to use these things. Just know that if someone gets on a mic and you don't want the lights changing to their voice, you might need to change your settings or change the color effect. Or just turn the color effect off altogether. So that's how you use the WMX1. Hopefully uh, that was helpful. Uh, these lights are pretty bright. I was pretty impressed with them. Might have to pick a couple up for myself. So that is how you use the WMX1, program it here, uh, how you use the whole system. Uh, I guess I should go through and just show how you save a file real quick on the WMX1. So you can go up here to settings and you can go to projects and you can hit save. And we're gonna label this one into this slot. And we're gonna say uh, default. All right, that's just an arbitrary name, does not really mean anything, but it does mean that if for some reason something changed or got reset, we can always go back to our default scene, which has all of these settings, these colors, uh, our, our scenes and our presets if we chose to program them. So that's how you're gonna use the WMX1. Hope that helps. And yes, this is a great controller. Um, next thing we're gonna do is show how you can program multiple lights into the WMX1.